So right now I'm talking to Michael Biltz, who is the Managing Director of the Tech Vision of Accenture Labs. Michael, it's wonderful to see you. And see you um, it's been wonderful working with you this last year. And you wear many hats. I do. Yes. But all of my hats are fun. They are fun. Mm -hmm. They are. I know they are. What are you most excited about right now? I, I think I'm most excited right now about the fact that uh, people are listening. Is that we, we've spent so long in a world where people are just reacting to whatever is happening, you know, what the latest product is, what the latest fad is, what the latest craze is. And I think for the first time, we're seeing pretty much across the board, everybody's starting to realize their own part in how we're shaping the world and starting to empower themselves to realize that they have a lot of control as to where our future goes versus viewing it as something that just happens to them. You know, one thing I, I really um, have learned working with all of you is, is it's it's not Accenture trying to shape a future. You really are collaborative. We are. We look at technology, and I think for a lot, long time, probably the last 30 years, almost as a way that's separating people from other people. But the most important change we're seeing with technology nowadays is that we're actually trying to use it in order to connect people together in ways mm -hmm. that we've never seen before. And what it's doing is it's changing us from a world where every company and every individual plays a role kind of in a set game, is that instead, by constantly changing what's happening, it's forcing people to essentially create relationships instead of roles. And once it becomes about a relationship between you and me, it's more important that the technology is connecting us to make sure we're on the same page and pushing towards that same goal, towards that same change, than it is making sure that each of us is playing our own role properly. So with the tech vision side, you know, you've been <clears throat> you were saying earlier that you it's about three to five years out. It is. And yet things are moving so quickly. How are you keeping up? That's actually the point of why we do it is that because things are changing so quickly right now, is that it's hard to understand what's noise and what are the things you have to pay attention to. Mm -hmm. you know? And frankly, is that whether you're talking about technologies or different countries or different industries, is there's so much there and it's changing so fast, is the default reaction for most people is to be overwhelmed. And so the reason that we do a three to five year look that our tech vision really focuses on is to try to explain what's happening, why it's happening, and then filter through it to say, here are the biggest opportunities you're going to have, and here are the biggest disruptions, and what you need to do or start thinking about in order to take action on it today. Do you feel that with people listening, do you feel that part of that is also, is it fear-based, is it survival-based, is it curiosity, is it a mixture? It's all of the above. You know, we've been talking about businesses and companies going through a digital transition you know, to transform themselves. But the reality is, is that that's happening to every aspect of our society. Our consumers are transforming themselves into this digital-based consumer, which means that they kind of understand what's going mm -hmm. on. They see the connections they have, and they see their lives changing. The workforce realizes that technology is fundamentally a part of not only their day-to-day -day job, but the skills that they're going to need to survive and thrive into the future. You know, governments are seeing technology as the way to interact with the population, to manage their economy, to shape what their society is going to be next. We're now no longer companies who have an expertise talking to people who don't understand what's going on. You're talking about an entire society that now has matured themselves, and so it's becoming a real conversation and a real collaboration to figure out now that we have all this opportunity, now that people have the power to shape our lives, to shape our realities, what do we want to do with that? And some of those realities have a lot of fear in them. You know, some of them have a lot of opportunity, but the fact that we care enough to have those conversations, I think is one of the optimistic looks, the optimistic feelings that we have that says, we have the opportunity to not let this be something that's decided for us, that on 
whim or chance just happens to come, you know, we're actively going to have these conversations to create a world that's going to be one shaped by us. And I think that's relatively unique, you know, in our new human history. Where do you see um, organizations um, in emerging markets? How do you see them being able to get hold of this innovation and data from someone like you? On one hand, is the all of the trials and tribulations that you see, you know, first world countries going through, is that these are things that, you know, hopefully the next time, the next country that's going to pick it up is going to be able to learn from and likely navigate it a little bit better. But I think that we also can't disregard the fact that when we start talking about populations who are very motivated to pick up new technology, mm -hmm. to learn new skills, and the fact that all of these technologies are easier to transmit through technology, to you know, learn them through online courses, you know, to learn them you know, <clears throat> how to you know, connect to people across the world, is that suddenly what we're seeing is, is that the world is one becoming a lot smaller, and I think that the things that we view as some of our toughest problems are actually going to play into us having a tighter connection with some of these <clears throat> you know, emerging markets. You know, right now, the biggest problem that we see on the marketplace is that every time we have a technology innovation, we're actually creating more jobs. Not that jobs aren't going away. Yes, there are entire sectors mm -hmm. and types of jobs, but we're creating more jobs you know, than realistically we're pushing out. The problem that we have is that we're not actually creating the skills for these. And so there's these constant needs, and whether it's you know, low birth rates you know, in a lot of developed countries, you know, or it's just the fact that we're creating all of these new jobs without people to fill it, means that there's a lot of need and push for us to be working with you know, all of these countries to figure out how we go about doing this together. You know, and if that's not far enough, it's companies are ambitious. And the reality is, is that some of the most interesting new markets are from these, you know, emerging markets. And I think that we're going to see more people spending time <clears throat> and investing money into these markets specifically to tap in the workforce and tap into the pent up demand for these types of products and services. Yeah, I'm finding it very exciting. I think with, you know, us focused on rapidly upskilling in different ways and different formats to engage people, but also working with you to, you know, how do you visualize the future so people can understand it more? Yep. Um, because no one has the time to go through big PDFs or um, our white walls here, as you yeah. know. So it's, so I'm particularly proud of, of that side of it because I feel we're trying to do something, all of us. Yep. Um, what are you the most excited about for the future? The fact that we are changing, I think, the relationships that we have uh, with each other, but I think in a much more positive way, is that when I started doing this, it, it was really interesting when you start, talk to different folks. You know, you know, part of my job is to talk to government officials, companies, individuals, I mean, you name it, in any industry, you know, in different parts of the world, and what you find out is the very first descriptions that people give you of themselves is what role they play within the company, what their specific job is, you know, what box they've pushed mm -hmm. themselves into and what constraints that they have around it. And that's how we've always rule, you know, that's how we've always viewed the world. And what that has done is it's created these really interesting viewpoints where people see themselves in these boxes and their goal is trying to optimize what they can do within that box. But because of that, you see companies trying to get away with things because of what the regulation and the governments have boxed around them. You see employees trying to get away with things, with <clears throat> the constraints that their company has put on them. You see consumers doing the same thing. And then even from the same standpoint, you see companies you know, and employees you know, butting heads. You see companies and consumers butting heads over what's right and what's fair within these constrained environments. But now that things are changing, and they're changing quickly, is that we're starting to interconnect with each other in different ways. And what we're seeing is that in order to actually move faster, 
in order to change, you have to change the individual, the company, the government, and the population all at the same time. And so as long as you're in that almost adversarial relationship, nothing changes because a company can be farther looking, but if nobody adopts their projects, nobody's interested. You know, a government can put out new regulations, and if they don't work, companies will leave for other countries. You know, the, the interconnectivity that we have for all of this is starting to tie us together, that we're just now starting to see people view not a, I have a company and a consumer as a faceless trans set of transactions, but rather a relationship that says, what do I as a business owe you as a consumer in order to be able to sell you these experiences and shape your life? You know, and a consumer similarly goes back to say, the, what are the things that I need out of this relationship <clears throat> and can I trust or entrust you know, with you, the data that I have, all of these things kind of combine together into this really interesting mix where I think we've got an opportunity to use the fact that we're all in this together and we can see those connections now as a way for us to start shaping things that aren't just a benefit for one group or another, which is what we're doing now, but rather trying to figure out how we change the whole system so it benefits everybody. And I, it's very exciting. And I want to thank you. And I'm looking forward to the next steps. Absolutely.